You're listening to Brandon Sports Talk, interviewing professional athletes and Paralympians and Olympians. And now for your professional athlete interview and your host, Brandon P. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the USA Paro Taekwondo Paralympian, Bri- Brianna Salandaro. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in competing in the sport of Paro Taekwondo? Sure. So I competed on the able bodied side for a period of time. And then in 2016, they announced that. Taekwondo was added to the 2020 Paralympic program. Um, and once I saw that, I uh, I looked up my disability to see that it corresponded with Taekwondo, and it did. I told my coaches, hey, look at this. You know, I found this on Google. This is what I want to do. And, you know, that's kind of how it started. What was that like in getting started into the sport of Taekwondo? Getting started with Taekwondo it was super exciting. I, you know, I was pretty young when I started. I originally started when I was five. Um, I went back when I was nine, and that's kind of when I stuck with it. Super exciting. Made a bunch of friends. It always gave me a goal. You know, going through the belt system, there was always something to look forward to. Um, and it was just something I really enjoyed as a young girl. So of course at the age of nine when you got started in Taekwondo, did you ever realize that it would be a career and you would have become a professional in it? Absolutely not. No. Um that's the last thing I ever thought. And there was one day actually that I got in my car and I was frustrated with myself and just like how I was performing um a couple of years later and my mom's like you know, Brianna, like, I've noticed a lot of frustration coming from you. Like, you know, you don't have to put yourself through this. Like, you're not going to be an Olympic athlete. Like, and that's okay. Like, saying it in more of a consoling way, not like a, you know, degrading way. And here we are, you know, uh, how many years later now? And I'm a Paralympian, so. (laughs) Of course, what was that like getting started in Taekwondo and making it into professional and making the Team USA team? Honestly, it was super exciting and it was actually very groundbreaking i'm the first female u.s athlete to compete for para taekwondo and it was a lot of firsts a lot of um a lot of unknown but it was super exciting it was honestly it was just such an honor there's really not enough words to describe it but yeah how was that feeling like obviously being known as the first and going down in the record books of being the first pair of taekwondo athletes it feels just again like super amazing just very cool to to know that I'm the first to do it is, is, it's very special to me. Um, it's something I, you know, I take a lot of pride in, but it, it was, it also came with a lot of pressure. You know, a lot of eyes are on you at that point, being the first to do something. So, yeah. What was that feeling like getting to make that Team USA team and representing Team USA? Representing Team USA felt like a dream come true because back in 2013, I remember I traveled with the team to um, the national championships that year. And I didn't compete because I didn't think I was good enough. And para taekwondo wasn't, you know hadn't started in the u.s yet and i remember watching two of my teammates make the u.s national team and the whole room was screaming and it was just such an electrifying feeling and i remember thinking to myself like i want to do this one day i want to feel these feelings i want to you know i want to make it to their level and do those kinds of things and i didn't know how i was going to get there or you know how it was going to happen but i made it happen and like i said it really was a dream come true what was that experience like for you getting to compete in the u.s open for the pair of pair of spear uh pair sparring so the u.s open um it was very exciting it was one of my first competitions um i took gold in 2017 and 2016 i believe again super it's always nice fighting on home you know home soil um having everyone there for you and just like knowing 
like everyone in the room is even more exciting you know it's like all the good looks and hey how are you and just like that kind of camaraderie like always feels nice and just a really you know really great homey feel I loved it what was that like the following year going to the Canada Opens and getting to compete for at Canada so Canada Open was actually my first international uh competition i was super nervous but it it all worked out it was great it it really gave me a taste of what my life would be like in the next four years of traveling training competing and those kinds of things and um what was that experience like getting to travel around the world and going to different countries like the europe asia and other countries and getting to compete in those opens traveling alone like just to all those countries is such a blessing and i'm so grateful I don't feel like everyone gets that opportunity. So to have had that, um, I'm just, again, like there are no words for that. Uh, It's really opened my eyes to so many different things in different parts of life. You build bonds with people that you're traveling with. So with my coach and my teammates, it's, you know, they become your family at some point. And I have nothing but good things to say. I mean, it, there were times that it was difficult, you know, you do you do feel uh, lonely at times just because sometimes it takes everything, takes you away from certain things and things like that. But uh, again, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I uh, absolutely loved it. How was that experience like getting to go to Mexico and compete for the Pero Taekwondo in Mexico? So competing in Mexico, uh, I believe that was 2019, was actually very special for me because prior to that competition, I had two hip surgeries. I had both my labrums repaired. And that was my first time back on the mat. I was extremely nervous because that was also the first competition after Tokyo. Uh, I'm sorry, after COVID. So, you know, it's tr- getting the, all those feelings back again and getting your head right to get back in the game. Unfortunately, I didn't win that day, but uh, it was a very close, close game. And I knew that I was making progress towards uh, doing well in Tokyo. So um, it's something I was very proud of. What was that lead up to prepare for Tokyo and make it to your first Paralympics? So the lead up to Tokyo, like I said, I moved out to Oklahoma probably two or three months prior to leaving for Tokyo. And we trained two to three times a day, almost every day. And coming from New York, Oklahoma is very different, especially like um, weather wise. So it was a big adjustment with like the heat training and the heat and those kinds of things. But it was great. It really um, prepared me for what it would be like in Tokyo with the heat and things like that. So yeah, it was just a lot of mental preparation, uh, along with like a sports psychologist, a lot of focus on nutrition. I worked with a nutritionist as well. But we really hunkered down on every single aspect you could think of to get ready for the games. What was that feeling like for you getting announced to make that Paralympic team to go to Tokyo for the Paralympics? So I actually knew before it was announced we knew for months and we couldn't say anything and that's what it really uh it was so hard not to say anything you know because you're just so excited and you know and i want to share it with the world and share it with everyone but um the day that i could finally say something was just like a weight off my shoulders because we could finally celebrate properly and um you know just enjoy enjoy the announcement uh, It was fantastic. Of course, getting to Tokyo, what was that experience like getting to compete in your first Paralympics? It was very different than I expected, especially because of COVID. So there were no families, you know, nobody outside. Japan was actually in a state of emergency when we arrived. So we were only allowed to stay in the village. When you're thinking about, oh my gosh, like I have the possibility to make it to the Olympics and you think about your family And you think about everyone that's supposed to be there to support you and things like that. It was very, very different than how I imagined just because of COVID. But being there, it was like so special in its own way. And, you know, I I wouldn't trade it for anything. It it was just absolutely amazing. And obviously, everyone wants that pre-COVID experience. But um, like I said, it was so special in its own way and uh, very, very nerve wracking. But other than that, it was just um, an experience of a lifetime for sure. Of course, getting to the Paralympics and competing in Tokyo, what was the competition like when you did get to Tokyo and compete? So competition was pretty fierce, very fierce, actually. For me, I was the only one in the division with cerebral palsy. Everyone else is a above the knee, uh, I'm sorry, an upper amputee. They have flexibility that I don't have and that I'll never have. And that's what made it a lot more difficult for me. But it also made it so much more exciting because... I knew if I win, it meant so much more, at least to me anyway. So going to Tokyo, I fought, going into Tokyo, I fought, I was ranked fourth or fifth, and I fought the fourth place seed. She did very well against me. I didn't win that one, but I did get another chance, I believe, against India. I don't even remember what country it was. But again, I didn't win that one either, and that just strictly came 
you know, came down to the difference in ability. But again, it was a very fierce competition. While at Tokyo and in the Paralympics, what were some of your favorite memories and moments competing in Taekwondo? Um, some of my favorite memories, the 2017 World Championships. Absolutely. That's my favorite competition. That's the one I'll tell everyone and anyone about. Um, I won a bronze medal that year. That was the first time really working with the national team coach who would then become the Paralympic coach and would coach me. I also medaled alongside my Paralympic teammate that year. And everything just kind of came together at that competition. And I don't know, we... We actually got to stay a lot longer than we normally do. We got to really explore England, so that was special. Yeah, that's definitely my top behind Tokyo. Um, and then obviously Tokyo for obvious reasons. And just, yeah, I mean, the years of training and traveling with everyone. Of course, what was that feeling like getting to put on the Paralympic rings and getting to represent not just the Paralympics, but Team USA? Receiving my Paralympic ring honestly made me like happy cry. Um, and representing Team USA on, on any stage, really, national, international, Paralympic, World Championship, is always a blessing. It's always uh, something I'll never take for granted. I always try to stay as humble as I can because it's it's not every day that you get that opportunity and it could it really can be taken from you at any moment. And How does it feel to have Paralympian behind your last name and know that you're a Paralympian? Honestly, I still am kind of like shocked by it because I, I, I've attached it to all my uh, email signatures and things like that. And everyone's like, oh my goodness, like I didn't know you were a Paralympian or, you know, like people ask me, what does that mean? And it's just so special, and even, like, when people ask me about it and get, I get to talk about it again, it kind of just, like, floods me back with all those memories, and it's really, yeah, I, I would say just the best way to answer that is just it's a really special feeling for me, for sure. What, so. does, it, what does it mean to you to be a U.S. Taekwondo athlete? Uh, to be a U.S. Taekwondo athlete means a lot to me. I mean, it's, it's definitely um, a different sport among all the other ones that you'll ever see. Um, it's not it's not very common, but it's very, like, close-knit. I feel like it, it's very, it's a very difficult sport. And I don't know, I, I think it means, it means a lot more to me than, than if it were to be another sport or something like, you know, along those lines. But it's something I'm definitely grateful that, you know, came together and shaped my life. Of course, what is that like, getting to live out your Paralympic dream and making it to the Paralympics? It, it's exciting and it, it was exciting but it's it's not I'm not satisfied it's not you know like I have so much more that I want to do and so much more that I want to give to that community and so much more I want to prove to myself as well so yeah that's the that's the best way I, I would answer that throughout your career what is that mama I made it moment like for you the I made it moment that's a good question I, I would probably date that back 2017 world championships bringing home a medal i i remember like being in my dining room the day before leaving and just being so overcome with anxiety and just like doubt in myself and just am i really ready for something like this of this level and to come home with a medal out of that competition being my first world championships uh and just the response i received from everyone was just so was just so you know nice and welcoming and just that really made me realize like okay like we're gonna go to tokyo you know and we're, we're going to get there no matter what. So For my listeners that don't know, how do you compete in Taekwondo? How do you compete in Taekwondo? So we wear electronic gear. We'll wear electronic foot guards and chest protectors. And the point to Taekwondo is to try to score as many points as possible while kicking your opponent, uh, both offensively, offensively and defensively. We also wear shin guards, um, forearm pads, gloves. Um, the able-bodied side has electronic headgear. Para Taekwondo does not. We only kick to the chest guard. But yeah, that that's how it goes. Who are some of the people in the sport of Taekwondo that you look up to? Right now, one of the biggest athletes that I'm looking up to right now is CJ Nicholas. I think he's an absolutely amazing athlete, amazing person. I think he has big, big things uh, coming for him in his future. And his fighting style and just like his mindset is just absolutely amazing i continue i've always looked up to and i continue to look up to my, my paralympic teammate evan Medell. he's had an amazing year this year he's won i believe almost every grand prix that they've had this year and he's just really crushing it and you know i'm just so proud of him and yeah i mean that's that's those are the two that i'm really looking at right now so who is the most influential person in your career that have shaped you into the taekwondo 
athlete that you are today? That's a good question. The most influential person that sh- the first person that comes to mind is actually the Paralympic team coach, uh, Coach Jason Foos. We traveled the world together and competed together, and he was always in my chair. And um, on the days that I got most frustrating, he always just reminded me, you know, don't get too high over the winds, don't get too lows over the you know, over the over the lows or, or the losses, I should say. And, you know, he really, he was just an amazing coach. And I'm just so grateful to have had him in my corner throughout my career. And I would say he definitely left a big impact on me. What was that feeling like getting to lift out your Paralympic dream and making it to the Paralympics? So making it to the Paralympics and living out my Paralympic dream, still speechless to this day. We're two years out now and um there's really not many words i can use to describe it i'm really grateful for the experience and uh, i'm looking forward to doing it again of course after the Paralympic olympics what were some of the things that you've been able to accomplish thus thus far for those that don't know unfortunately cerebral palsy has been removed from para taekwondo so i did retire shortly after tokyo after that announcement but i have Switch gears and I've started training for para track and field for the Paris 2024 games. Um, I won nationals in the 100 meter sprints this past May, and I'm looking forward to hopefully being in uh, Chile for the Pan American Games this coming year, uh, this coming November. What was that process like for you, retiring from Taekwondo and getting into the para track and field? Retiring from Taekwondo specifically uh, was honestly very depressing it's not we it's something that we heard previously may happen that they may pull the disability so it was something i was kind of mentally preparing for before tokyo but it's not something i really shifted my focus to just because that wasn't what i should have been focusing on at the time but once the uh, announcement came out it was heartbreaking it really was um you know they made some changes with in the sport that would have allowed me to probably have had better outcomes so that's a little bit frustrating but moving over to power track and field i absolutely love it they have multiple cerebral palsy divisions um which definitely makes me feel more welcome as an athlete and i think it's definitely better suited for me as a cerebral palsy athlete so very exciting going forward what was that transition like for you from going from taekwondo to getting into the track and field para side i'm still kind of in the transition i i've only had three races so far it's very very different the training is very very different it's just i'm still learning so much honestly um you know and it's a lot para track and field is a lot more developed in the paralympic community whereas para taekwondo is still pretty new so um it's very nice to have people that um kind of understand what i'm going through as a new para track and field athlete in the same shoes like having cp just like me or even just there's a lot more openness to other disabilities as well so making you know friends with all different disabilities uh being involved in that community um has definitely been an eye-opener what advice would you give those people that are looking to get into the sport of para taekwondo i would say go for it I, it's it's amazing it's exciting there's just so many um there's so many uh benefits to doing so i i, I know it could seem a little intimidating at first but once you rip the band-aid uh, i promise you'll fall in love with it it's it's such an adrenaline rush it you know you're not going to get that rush anywhere else so definitely go for it what advice would you have those first time paralympians that are looking to compete for their first time in the paralympics first time paralympians i would say definitely realize that nerves are normal if you weren't nervous it, it would be a little concerning being nervous kind of means that you you know you care and you have something to to achieve and and go for and i, I think it's it's best to um focus on your mental state just as much as you do physically just to prepare you for that moment because it is it is a very very big moment and could sometimes be a little daunting mentally so um just you know preparing yourself both mind and and body and spirit you know what advice would you have those paralympians and olympians that are going through that retirement phase that you once did i would say you know take the time to grieve because in a sense it is kind of like grieving um taekwondo was a sport that i did for 14 years so to to, to not be a part of that anymore or to not be a part of it in a way that I was anymore um, was very depressing. And I think you have to give yourself that time to feel those emotions. After you feel those emotions, it's important to set new goals, whether it be athletically, um, job-wise, financially, life, you know, lifestyle, whatever it is, I think it's important to keep chasing a goal no matter what. So, What advice would you have those Olympians and even Paralympians that are transitioning from the sport they may love 
to into another sport to represent that sport? I would say keep an open mind. There's a lot. I try not to put any expectations on para track and field just because it's not fair to myself to do so. So just being as open minded as possible and just realizing that majority of it is not going to be the same as what you've once experienced. But in some aspect, aspects may be even better than what you thought. So definitely keep an open mind for sure. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? Um, So my Instagram is uh my name. Brianna Salonero. My Facebook is my name, Brianna Salonero. Um, and my TikTok, I believe, is B Salonero. Thank you again, Brianna Salonero, for your interview and best luck in your future as you begin this new journey in track and field. Thank you so much. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Brianna Salonero, for your interview and best luck in your future. Thank you so much. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.